You're listening to episode number 35 of the Play Your Position podcast. Welcome to the Play Your Position podcast, where your story matters and we make it count. Here's your host, Mary Lou Kaser. Let's get started. Kick off, move the chains, and touchdowns. Welcome to the Play Your Position podcast, where each week, another insightful conversation makes it into the end zone. I'm your host, Mary Lou Kayser, and this is the podcast that features conversations with and about people who show up and play full out each and every day. They are the people you admire, entrepreneurs, writers, artists, musicians, parents, teachers, athletes, adventurers, and their stories give us a glimpse into what it means to be human. My goal for each episode is to inspire you with stories that make you think, introduce you to cool new people, open you up to new ideas, and inspire you to keep playing full out in your life's work in order to make a difference. As always, details about each episode can be found over on the show notes page at my website, maryloukaser.com forward slash podcast, where you will find a clickable list of each episode. Hello, everyone. I am super excited about introducing you to my guest for the show today, Jay B. Myers. Jay, are you ready for kickoff? I uh, yeah, absolutely am, Mary Lou. Thanks for having me on the show. All right. So, Jay B. Myers is founder and CEO of Interactive Solutions Inc., otherwise known as ISI, a Memphis based firm that specializes in video conferencing distance learning, telemedicine, and audiovisual sales and support. Jay started ISI in 1996 and has built it into a $25 million company with 51 employees. The company was named seven times in the past 11 years to Inc. Magazine's list of the fastest growing private companies in the United States. And not only that, in 2007, Jay published his first book, Keep Swinging, an entrepreneur's story of overcoming adversity and achieving small business success. A natural storyteller, Jay is a sought-after speaker at CEO conferences and entrepreneurial development programs where he shares inspiring stories and practical tips based on growing ISI from 11 to $25 million during the Great Recession. Jay's message is detailed in his second book, Hitting the Curveballs, How Crisis Can Strengthen and Grow Your Business. And he lives in Collierville, Tennessee in Holmes Beach, Florida with his wife, Maureen. The couple have two children, Jordan and Caitlin, and a black lab named Casey. And Jay, I know there's a lot more to your story, which is one of the reasons why you're on the podcast today to share with listeners some more details about your amazing journey. I just want to jump right in and have you start the show by sharing with listeners what position are you playing really well right now and how did you get to that position to begin with? Well, Mary Lou, again, thanks for having me on the show. And by the way, before we get going, I just want to make this point uh, very proud of this fact uh, that today on March the 11th is ISI's 19th birthday or anniversary celebration. So uh, very proud of technology to be around 19 years later. Pretty uh, unheard of, actually, in technology in many ways. So uh, excited for what's happened in the past and looking forward to the future. And so far as how I got into this role, I am the owner and the CEO of, of Interactive Solutions. And, you know, that is my role that I play right now. But I also have a role I feel very important, which is the, the entrepreneur side of me is that, that I also play the position of, of being a mentor to a number of small businesses and uh, entrepreneurs in the area. I feel very grateful for the business to have been around 19 years later and honestly feel duty-bound to share my experiences with other business owners and entrepreneurs because we've been very fortunate. We've been able to overcome a lot of things and, and being successful. Don't take it for granted and work hard every day to, to keep it up, but that's the other role. So I am the owner of the company, but I'm also the uh, the entrepreneur slash mentor for some of the other business owners in the area. Well, I can't say enough about playing that position as well, Jay, because 
mentorship in this culture that we live in where things are happening so fast and people have so many questions. Plus, we are still a little bit raw, even though it's 2015. I think there's still some rawness around the edges around business because of what we went through in 2007 and 2008. And I know that both of the books that you have written really are centered around those two or that particular time in our history and how your company and to your credit has managed to not only survive, but thrive. And so I'm just going to go a little bit off pattern today because I, I think your story is so powerful. And I would love for you to share with listeners, since it's such a part of your position as an author, a little bit more about your book, which I we were sharing in the pre-chat that I just had the honor to read. And um, actually, I listened to the audio version and it was fabulous. And uh, listeners, you know, there'll be a link to J uh, Jay's book in the show notes. But could you tell us a little bit more about how that book came about, why you wrote it, and what some of the takeaways are in it? So one of the things, when I wrote Keep Swinging, it was just one of those kind of off-the-wall crazy ideas that kind of came about, because my wife suggested that we had had a lot of interesting experiences and wanted to put them in a book. And originally, she wanted me to write a book about sales, because if you look at my DNA, it's all sales and marketing type and all, but Keep Swinging ended up being more about stories about uh, the entrepreneurial journey we had been through and specifically dealing with an embezzlement crisis we had that we'll talk about probably later on in this interview, but uh, back in 2003, you know, had to overcome that. In the case of uh, hitting the curveballs, it was really, I, I was trying to uh, figure out some way to possibly write another book. And my VP of sales and I were talking one day and he said something about, uh, you, you really should write another book. And I said, well, great. What should I write about? And he said, how about growing a business during a recession? And I started thinking about it and I reflected on the fact that we had had uh, serious success from 2007 to 11. And, and then looking back on it, it was during the, the worst economy in 80 years. So we went from 11 to $25 million in four years. And when I started thinking about not only the numbers, which were, you know, we were very grateful to be able to earn that business and, and very fortunate. The other part of it was, well, how did we do it? And so one of the things in the, in the book, Mary Lou, that you may recall is that we took a different path, kind of this baseball metaphor and everything, to create a farm system. And instead of going out and having, you know, hiring people in the traditional way, we, we kind of looked at some different paths. Now, let me digress and tell you, not only did we grow the business from 11 to $25 million from 2007 to 11, we did it after having lost 80% of our sales team to various things that happened, everything, and, and turnover. So we had to replace the whole team. In doing that, that was a, a major league challenge. And so when we had looked at hiring practices and what we wanted to do and creating a farm system, we did it rather than the, the traditional route, which was to go out and hire experienced people and, you know, kind of a quick fix, we hired millennials. So we went out and hired young people that we could train that had a little bit of experience, but more potential than experience. And I think that's, for hitting the curveballs, that, that's a big message. It's that, you know, when you're having a difficult time, the, the, the recession was difficult and it continues to be tough in my industry today. But rather than taking a traditional route, Rather than going out and doing the same thing everybody else does, what we did in 2007 was we, we couldn't change the fact we lost all these people, 80% of the sales team, you know, it was, it was terrible. And on top of that, Mary Lou, you may remember that I had the death of a, a close personal friend and then also an employee that, that passed away. I went to two funerals Saturday on Saturday, like bookends, had the, all the people leave me. This is all in 30 days. And then also my wife was diagnosed with breast cancer. All this terrible stuff, crazy stuff was going on, but, but back to the point of the business, when we decided you know, that we had to obviously replace these people, we did not take the easy way out. We did not do the same thing everybody else did. We created a farm system. We brought in young people. We trained them like crazy. We motivated them. We, we set the bar high. We gave them the resources to, to be able to support them. And they just did an astounding job for four years to grow the business from 11 to $25 million during the worst economy in 80 years. I'm still just so proud of those guys. And by the way, they're still with me. So that was the story. You know, that was kind of like the, the backdrop of the story was, how do you do this during the recession? One of the things was hiring the millennials. 
And then how do you, you know, pick yourself up and move forward in all aspects of your life and business to, to be able to overcome some of these difficult times? Yes, which is, I think, a true mark of a real leader, which you clearly are, because, again, your main position, Jay, was and is CEO and founder of this amazing company, right? And yet, as part of really moving your initiatives, your business forward, you saw that writing a book and telling the story, pulling back the curtain and letting people in on how did we do this? How did we manage to not only survive, but thrive? Here's our playbook, guys. And that's what the book is is about. And along the way are these stories that shape the narrative. I was just amazed how you really your fortitude during those times of, of personal crisis the 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 two like you said the bookends uh the funerals that you had to attend and then your your wife and it just i think speaks to how powerful having a clear mission and vision for what you want to achieve and not necessarily following the footsteps of everybody else because you guys decide to do something differently And I'm just curious, Jay, because you really are a coach and mentor for so many, but who was an an instrumental coach or mentor for you during that time and and continues to influence you in your position today? When I started the business and for the first uh, several years, a couple of uh, three people, actually, uh, Mary Lou. So my father, who I was named after and everything, was the president of the Better Business Bureau here in Memphis. He was a, a huge and continues to be a huge influence on my career inspiring me to make sure not only to start a business, but to do, to run the business and do it the right way. Honesty, integrity, and ethics. Those are very important to me. In fact, I'm the board chair of the the Better Business Bureau, the BBB, today. So I'm very proud of that. Also, my brother, who who passed away a number of years ago, a similar mantra, do it the right way. Don't just create a business, but do it the right way. So those were family members, very, very powerful. I still have their pictures on my desk. I think about them all day, uh, every day. The other really interesting mentor I think that, that you could appreciate, Mary Lou, is that when I first started my business, I'll make this story brief. I ran into Kimmins Wilson, who's a founder of Holiday Inns. Craziest thing, he read an article in the Memphis Business Journal about me and the business and stopped by for a visit to see some equipment and so on and so forth. I was so overwhelmed with, here's a guy that literally started an industry, and he's coming into this one-man office <laughs> to see me. It was crazy. I was so excited. I had my receptionist uh, go to the Walgreens or wherever to go and, and get a camera, one of the instant cameras, and take pictures. And I am, I'm proud to tell you this, that I, I uh, still have the pictures of Kimmins Wilson and myself in my office 19 years later. He's my lucky charm. <laughs> I love it. He, one of the things, again, this is a man that started this massive business and everything, but he sees the demonstration of my technology, loved it and everything, didn't buy anything, but he did when he was at the door, I'll never forget, he turned around to me and he looks at me now and he says, he says, you hang in there. He says, you're going to make some money with this business. And I'll tell you, Mary Lou, I'm a good old Catholic. And I, it was, I felt like the Pope had just blessed me. <laughs> it was like, oh, God. I mean, and it was just like one of those moments of encouragement that's like if this man that has done it all and built a business out of dirt sees this in me, I might just have a chance. Like I said, the pictures of Mr. Wilson and I are still in my office. In fact, uh, he passed away in 2003. I believe January or February, later that year, the Memphis Chamber of Commerce had an a award they gave out, the Emerging Business Award. And I'm proud to tell you that ISI, we were the very first recipient of that award. It's still one of my favorite moments in uh, the history of the company. So the, my father, my brother, Kim and Wilson were early on mentors. Today, as, as time has gone on, I, I have a number of people that I go to for advice and, and mentoring. I've got a good friend of mine. His name is Dave Nelson that... Um, started a logistics company with he and his brother several years ago, very successful. He actually sold the business, but I go to him quite a bit for just advice and things. He grew this business to a a large entity with hundreds of employees. I also go to my accountant who does our auditing and everything. He's an old college friend of mine who also has his own business, 20 plus accountants and CPAs that I get a lot of good advice from and those kind of people. So it's, you know, it's almost like my informal board of directors. I also have a financial advisor, Charlie Arbeck, I've been with for probably 20 something years. He's an entrepreneur, runs a, a thriving financial services business. So I get a lot of good mentoring advice and things from him as well. So 
I've been very blessed and fortunate to have a number of people in my life that have been able to help me and, and believe in me. And, uh, you know, it's almost like that. I don't know if you've ever heard the Abraham Lincoln quote, uh, Mary Lou, but it's something to the effect of one of the reasons why they were successful is that he had friends that believed in him and he didn't want to let them down. And that's yes. the way I believe. So that's I, I right. think it's been very fortunate. You have been fortunate, Jay, and and certainly having that informal board of directors can come in handy during the good times and the bad, which we're going to get to that at this point in the show, which is the move the chains in any football game. Anyone who has seen a game knows that after kickoff, just about anything can happen. And certainly there's those moments of celebration and excitement, but there's times when we find ourselves either playing out of position or we throw the ball and it's intercepted or even worse, we we fumble or get sacked. And I know you alluded to this story a little bit earlier in the show. Why don't you share that story with us now of, I would imagine you consider it one of the worst sacks or even losses of your career. Well, Mary Lou, let me just say this. Uh, Playing out of position, I think I've been doing that for 19 years. I'm I'm, I'm a salesman masquerading as an owner and an entrepreneur, but uh, but it's been fun. But yeah, moving the chains, I think it's kind of interesting when I was looking at those notes uh, that you had sent me for this interview to prepare for it. I, I thought about this a lot. And moving the chains is very tough in small business because sometimes you just personal life and things get into into issues and all. But I'll make the story as brief as I can. Back in 2003, we had a major issue come up with the business where I had discovered a theft. Uh, My accounting manager who sold over $250,000 from the company. The way it was discovered will kind of have to dial back a little bit and tell you that you mentioned earlier on the intro, we're Inc. Magazine, fast growing list and all that. I've been a very... uh, avid reader of Inc. Magazine forever, and uh, since I started the business. And in April of 2003, I read an article in Inc. about titled the, A Thief Within, and it was talking about an accounting manager that stole money from this company uh, near Chicago. April 28, 2003, the next day, Mary Lou, I went to the office thinking about that article, literally about mid-morning after thinking about it, thinking about it, you know, all this stuff, restless night, it hit me that I had not checked my payroll records since my brother had passed away the previous summer. Lo and behold, the receptionist hands me the payroll records. I open it up thinking that may be a place where something could happen, and guess what? It was. Mm. And right there in front of my eyes was bonuses and commissions being paid to both the accounting manager and the receptionist who just handed me those records. And it was the craziest time I've ever been through in my life. You talk about fumbling the ball and about the whole thing out of position. I was way out of my position after my brother passed away. It was, he and I were very close. It was horrible. And I thought about a lot of things like selling the business to doing something else to what have you after he had passed away. And I just took my eye off the ball. And it took that almost a year later in that spring of 2003, when after June of 2002, when my brother passed away to, to literally kind of, for lack of better words, uh, stamp out of it. When I saw the payroll records, I immediately did call a payroll company, try to find out what was going on. They almost they had a heart attack on the phone. Then everything started from there. We called in the local police, which was a bad move. Then we called in a certified fraud examiner. Finally, we got a, the right people on board, which included the United States Secret Service. And Mary Lou, it was horrible. I mean, it, it was just, it was surreal. The lady had forged about 50 to 60 checks using a a rubber stamp with my name on it. And I don't want to blow the whole story. It's all in Keep Swinging. Very emotional to write the book. The kind of things that can happen in small business and taking your eye off the ball. The checks were being cashed. And frankly, I should have caught it. I didn't. And I could give you a great excuse. Like I didn't have copies of the image checks where this phony signature was on the the check and the copies. But I was just getting the statement without the image checks paperwork. Therefore, I didn't catch it. But I think, uh, very frankly, Mary Lou, it sounds a little deep uh, to your listeners out there, but I think that God was looking after me as he has through this whole journey. And it was divine intervention that that day that I read that article or that night and then the next day discover it and be able to catch him and, and, and make the necessary things happen. Because here's the scary part, Mary Lou, had I not caught the theft on that day on April 29th of 03, I wouldn't be talking to you right now. Because we would have been out of business by the end of the year. She was stealing anywhere from fifteen to $25,000 a month. 
Wow. But God was smiling on us. God uh, put me in a position, I believe, to to make the right thing happen there. And I'm very proud of my staff and everything that happened um, in supporting me through that whole crisis. And uh, we got through it. I think there's something really to be said for divine intervention. And without going into, like you said, the deep space of, of that whole realm, the, the fact of the matter is there was a reason that you read that article that day. And it triggered for you, whether it snapped you out of that year-long grieving that you were in, which again, I'm so glad you brought that up because one of the things that I talk a lot about with colleagues and and just people in general is the kind of world we live in with everything being so in our face through social media, through the internet, through websites. It's really easy to fall into the trap of believing that everybody else is living this ideal life and nothing ever goes wrong and we see a picture and they're smiling and we think, oh, they have it so great. But the reality is, is that hard times fall on everybody and you just don't know when it's going to happen. And it's hard to predict how you're going to respond. But because you, because life is a team sport, there were some team members looking out for you who were, you know, through that article, you didn't know them, but the people, the person that wrote that article in a way was a team member who put it into your head. Hey, you better check to see what's going on at your company. And you did. And just really quick, Jay, I'm curious, did those two people end up doing time for their crime? Mary Lou, I am proud to tell you that the accounting manager did over 100 months. So over eight years in federal prison. No parole, no nothing, just hard time. Her accomplice, that I'd I'd like your listeners to read the book to, to figure out there was another connection. It was an inside job. The receptionist did uh, some time more in kind of one of those weekend sort of deals and everything. And it was uh, justice was served. For your listeners, I know a lot of people get in these things and say they'd like to prosecute against an embezzlement and everything. But, you know, bad publicity, too costly or get off anyway, all those kind of things. We chose, a, again, a different path. We wanted to send the message to all the business community that this behavior is not acceptable. I was raised in honesty, integrity, and ethics, you know, to honor where I came from, to honor my family, my brother, my uh, dad. I was determined to make sure that the justice prevailed there. We were going to go after him with everything we had. You know, God bless everybody that supported us, the U.S. Attorney, the Secret Service. I'll tell you a quick story, Mary Lou. Uh, a week or so ago, had an industry meeting, a group I'm a part of called USAV, and we had several of our members. The, there are companies all around the com- uh, country that are part of USAV that have video conferencing, audio visual type sales and support companies. Anyway, two of our members, we got 50 members, two of our members had been stung directly by embezzlement. I brought in the Secret Service, the manager, the agent in charge that helped me with my case to speak to our group about what to look out for and everything. So it was kind of gratifying, even all these years later, to make sure that people are aware of the fact this stuff's not going away. But, you know, you, you get put in a position sometimes in life. And, and a friend of mine asked me the other day, he said, if you could think about all these things that have happened to you since you started your business, would you, would you still have done it? And I said, absolutely. Absolutely, yeah. That life life and, and business and everything, it's a journey. You know, the thing about it is, is that I, did I think I'd have the strength to get all through, uh, get through all these things? I don't know about that, Mary Lou. I think that experience builds strength. And I think when you go through some of these very difficult situations, you develop a, a pretty you know, a tough, thick skin about that kind of stuff because you, you don't have an opportunity to do otherwise. I mean, could I have folded my business in 03 after all that stuff happened? Yeah, I guess. Many times small businesses do close up because of an embezzlement, but it never seemed right to me. I never wanted to give in, not to that or anything else. And I had too many people counting on me. You know, like you're talking about having uh, been thrown for a loss. We were definitely literally thrown for a loss $257,000 later. But you know what? We learned a lot about how to run the business more efficiently and effectively and and just better, period. The publicity that this thing got, it was crazy. Very quickly, I'll tell you that our story was three times in the front page of the uh, business section, the Memphis paper. And years later, several years later, we had a front cover story in the small business section of the Wall Street Journal. My book, Keep Swinging, was actually for several days was shown, the, the whole thing and the display about making the bestseller list. It was on the big board, the NASDAQ, in Times Square. I mean, it's crazy how much. I was on Fox Business telling the story about the investment. Wow, yeah. So uh, a funny part of that is my my son, Jordan, uh, did a kid one day, and he said, Dad, he said, you're the only person I know 
that can take a quarter of a million dollar theft and make it into a PR event. <laughs> but anyway, but you know, you get challenged, thrown for losses. Like you said, you know, you've got to find the intestinal fortitude. And I have a lot of great friends, family, people that have that have been in my corner for a long time that they were determined to help me succeed through all this. And so I have to give them credit. And we all kind of move the chains. That's right. And with that team and moving the chains, you often will find yourself in the red zone, staring down the end zone. So, Jay, I think it's time that we take the ball into the end zone for a touchdown. There are less than 30 seconds left on the clock. You are down by four points. It's third down, and it is now or never. Tell us a story about a time when you overcame this obstacle and ran the ball into the end zone for a touchdown that won the game for you. Mary Lou, it's simple. We'll go back to the start of the interview. 2007, I lost 80% of my sales team, had the deaths of two a friend and an employee. My wife gets breast cancer. It's a desperate time. I'm so scared. I didn't want to turn the lights off my bedroom, afraid of what the next day was going to look like. But you know what we did? We took a unique approach, hired the millennials, and doubled business, more than doubled business, during the recession, the worst economy in 80 years. I'd call that a touchdown. I would call that a touchdown that won the Super Bowl. <laughs> so I appreciate that. Yeah, that's uh, you've definitely been through some very challenging times, Jay, but to your credit, you've hung in there. You've been willing to pivot and adjust. You have looked to other people to give you that strength and guidance when you didn't feel like you had it in yourself. And here you are in 2015 with a very, very strong company that's solid and serving different communities in different ways and, and can be very proud of that. And so as we bring this, this game to an end today, what are one to three key offensive strategies straight out of the J. Myers playbook that listeners could implement right away to move the chains of their lives and or businesses or careers forward? Well, I'm thinking two of the three, Mary Lou, involved my uh, friend Kimmins Wilson, God rest his soul, founder of Holiday Inns, had brilliant uh, quotes and everything. So I'm going to use two of those if you don't mind. Awesome. One of them is, yeah. this, I think this is key and this is my number one. For all the entrepreneurs, small business owners, and just people trying to figure out what to do with their careers, put opportunity ahead of risk. Look at the opportunity more than anything else ahead of risk. Don't worry so much about risk. Opportunity first. Second thing, work a half a day. You're going to ask me why. Either the first 12 hours or the second 12 hours <laughs> to work a half a day, right? Kimmins Wilson, all about hard work. And like you mentioned, Mary Lou, also head down, tail up. That was what my mother always taught me. So you've got to work hard. The third thing is, and I think that this is one thing that's been a secret to our success 19 years later, network like crazy. Always network as a business owner, entrepreneur, or somebody trying to find your way in your career. Never miss an opportunity to go out, put yourself out there, whether it be with volunteer work, mentoring, any kind of groups and, and business type opportunities, and even personal, where you can church groups or whatever, put yourself out there and network to tell your story because you'll never know who's going to be listening and where it may lead to. That's right. And stories are what keep us alive. They're what inspire us to move through the times that may be challenging us. And I love the fact that all these years later, you're still drawing on that man that walked into your office and you took a picture with the <laughs> little instant throwaway <laughs> camera. I mean, back in the day, we didn't have our smartphones where we could do a selfie, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, I just love it. So Jay, what is the best way for people to connect with you online? Where does Jay Myers hang out these days? Well, certainly on LinkedIn, you and I have connected on that, Mary Lou. Also, uh, I'd love for your listeners to visit my uh, website for the books and uh, the public speaking, everything that I do about my books. And I'd love your listeners. They have an opportunity for me to speak to a group. I'm available for that and love to do it. jmyersceo.com is, is a, a great way to connect to me because you can see a lot about the, the books and all the other stories. So it's J-A-Y, Myers, M-Y-E-R-S, CEO.com. So J Myers, CEO, one word, dot com. Also, my email address is just the letter J, M-Y-E-R-S, at I-S-I-T-N, like Tennessee, dot com. Uh, I'm also uh, on Twitter at, at J.B. Myers. Facebook, you can find me, uh, J. Myers CEO or just J. Myers. So all those places, 
love to hear from your listeners and uh, help them out any way we can. Well, thank you for that. And again, listeners, you know that the links that Jay has just shared will be on the show notes page over at the new home of the Play Your Position podcast, which will be playyourpositionpodcast.com forward slash Jay. So you want to be looking out for that. And Jay, it has been so much fun today chatting with you. And thank you so much for sharing your stories of both triumph and adversity with the listeners of the Player Position Podcast. I wish you all the best moving forward and keep scoring those touchdowns. Appreciate it, Mary Lou. Thanks for having me on the show. Hey team, did you know that one of the fastest ways to boost your credibility in the marketplace is with a book? That published authors have a far greater chance to land speaking gigs, charge higher fees, not to mention getting bragging rights and making a lifelong dream come true? These days, the barriers to getting a book written and published have pretty much disappeared with on-demand publishing platforms like Amazon's Kindle and CreateSpace making it super easy. I know, I've written three of my own and I'm working on my fourth. The truth is, despite how easy it is to get published today, there are still a lot of minefields to step through on the way to getting that first box of books delivered to your house. That's why for a limited time, I am offering an exclusive opportunity for listeners of the Play Your Position podcast to connect with me privately and discuss your book project. If this sounds like you, head on over to playyourpositionpodcast.com forward slash book and follow the instructions on the page. Again, that's playyourpositionpodcast.com forward slash book. See you there. Thanks for listening to the Play Your Position podcast, where your story matters and we make it count at MaryLouKazer.com.